In this video, we're going to talk about acute cholecystitis. This is an overview and introduction. So acute cholecystitis is inflammation of the gallbladder, um, and it's usually because of obstruction of the cystic duct by gallstones. Acute cholecystitis is the most common complication of cholelithiasis, which is formation of gallstones in the gallbladder. Just to be clear, cholelithiasis is formation of stones in the gallbladder which can lead to a few complications, one of which is acute cholecystitis. The other terminology, cholidocholithiasis, is formation of stones, gallstones, in the common bile duct. But we will not focus on that here. In this video, we will mainly focus on acute cholecystitis, but really, we will also talk about um, every other complication, and hopefully we can get our head around it together. So here is a guy with right upper quadrant pain of the abdomen. Let's look at the normal anatomy of the upper GIT partly. So here is the gallbladder. Now the gallbladder is an organ that stores what's called bile, and bile is a mixture of cholesterol and other pigments. The bile is important in digesting fatty foods. The bile is actually produced by the liver, and gallbladder just stores the excess bile. So back to the anatomy. Here is the gallbladder. The body, the neck, and the fundus of the gallbladder. This is the cystic duct coming out from the gallbladder and connects to the common hepatic ducts, which arise from the liver. The joining of the cystic duct and common hepatic ducts forms the common bile duct, which runs all the way down and joins with the pancreatic duct from the pancreas. Before moving to the pancreas, the stomach actually continues on to the small intestine here, transporting the half-digested food content. The first part of the small intestine is the duodenum. Then the duodenum goes on to the jejunum, which is the second part. Here is the pancreatic duct I was talking about, and here is part of the pancreas. And essentially, the gallbladder will contract and release bile, or the liver will release bile, which will go down and end up in the common bile duct. The common bile duct runs all the way down and joins with the pancreatic duct from the pancreas. The newly formed duct will then release um, these, this bile and the enzymes from the pancreas into the duodenum through the ampulla of vata to help digest food. In acute cholecystitis, a gallstone, which was formed in the gallbladder, gets stuck in the cystic duct. Now, a lot of us actually have gallstones in our gallbladders, but they don't cause any problems. We are asymptomatic. Sometimes people get unlucky, and the gallstones get stuck either temporarily or for some time. There are many types of gallstones, but we won't talk about that here. Just think of gallstones as a mixture of cholesterol and other pigments within bile. So when the gallstones get stuck in the cystic duct, the gallbladder will try to contract and push it out without any success. And this obstruction results in inflammation to the gallbladder, and this is acute cholecystitis. Acute cholecystitis shares similar features to two other conditions called biliary colic and cholangitis. But these three conditions do differ. We won't talk about them now, but they, but they differ in the pain, having fever or increased white cell count, and finally jaundice, which is yellowing of the skin. So what are actually these conditions? Well, biliary colic is where there is only temporary obstruction of the gallstone at the neck of the gallbladder, so it can go in and out. Acute cholecystitis, as we mentioned, is the gallstone stuck at the cystic duct causing inflammation of the gallbladder. 
And cholangitis is a complication of gallstones where infection develops in the common bile duct. And this is life-threatening. So the signs and symptoms of acute cholecystitis specifically are fever, nausea, vomiting, right upper quadrant pain, pain which may radiate, radiate to the right side, the back. On examination, there is a positive Murphy sign. Murphy sign is where a hand is placed at the mid inferior border of the liver. The patient is then asked to take a deep breath in. The diaphragm lowers during inspiration and with our hand being placed where it is, it will irritate the gallbladder as the diaphragm pushes the gallbladder down. And this will trigger pain. The patient becomes startled and stop breathing in. So going back to the small table we made, the differences in the three condition, biliary colic, acute cholecystitis, and cholangitis, is that biliary colic only presents with right upper quadrant pain, typically. Acute cholecystitis, right upper quadrant pain, with fever and raised white cell count. And finally, cholangitis presents with right upper quadrant pain, fever, increased white cell count, and jaundice, yellowing of the skin. These three findings make up what's called Charcot's triad. Complication of cholecystitis is a tumor of the gallbladder, chronic cholecystitis, mucosal, where mucus is secreted into the gallbladder, empyema, where, which is pus in the gallbladder thanks to infection by the bacteria. There is Maritzi syndrome, and Maritzi syndrome is basically when the gallstone in the cystic duct actually impacts or obstructs the hepatic duct. And obstruction of the hepatic duct means that the bile being produced by the liver will go backwards, will backflow and cause what's known as obstructive jaundice. Other complications include perforation of the gallbladder. Gallbladder duodenal fistula, allow, which allows large gallstones to pass through, causing gallstone ileus at the terminal ileum. Gallstones can trigger cholangitis from cholidocholithiasis or cholelithiasis when it obstructs the common bile duct. Gallstones can cause pancreatitis if it obstructs the passage of contents from the pancreas into the duodenum. Finally, obstruction at the common bile duct or above can cause backflow of bile to the liver. The bile backflow can lead to obstructive jaundice. On the side note, there's something called Cavoisier's law. And Cavoisier's law essentially says that the presence of enlarged gallbladder with jaundice is unlikely uh, due to gallstones, rather uh, carcinoma of the head of the pancreas. Investigations that can be performed with a person suspected of biliary tree problems include full blood count, which may show raised white cell counts, amylase lipase to check for pancreatitis, CRP, EUCs, and LFTs. And LFTs are important because there will be abnormal LFTs with a problem that occurs in the biliary tree system. Ultrasound is diagnostic and can detect gallstones and is used to elicit Murphy's sign too. Abdominal x-ray can only pick up 10% of gallstones. Another imaging technique is the HIDA scan, which is a contrast scan that lights up the biliary tree. If the biliary tree doesn't light up fully, there, there can be an obstruction. The management of acute cholecystitis is surgery. Again, people can have gallstones normally, and if, there are, and if they are asymptomatic, there is no reason to remove the gallbladder unless they have risk factors for future complications. Surgery is done for symptomatic people or people with recurrent gallstone disease. The management of acute cholecystitis before surgery is nil by mouth, fluids, and IV antibiotics, pain relief with analgesia. 
surgery can be done laparoscopically or open. Laparoscopic cholecystectomy is done over open cholecystectomy. In laparoscopic cholecystectomy, there are a few ports or holes in the abdomen that can be made. These include the surgeon point under the xiphysternum, the, the Hassan camera point, assistant point, and the accessory point. Let us look inside the abdomen from an uh, inferior view. The abdominal cavity is pumped with air, carbon dioxide, and this makes the surgeon's work easier as it creates space. So here is the liver, the gallbladder. Here is the laparoscopic light that views the area from the Hassan camera point and the two assistant ports as examples of how things are assessed in the area. So I'm not a surgeon, but this hopefully will give you an understanding of cholecystectomy in general. Firstly, what happens is that they want to expose the gallbladder because the gallbladder and the digestive organs are surrounded by the visceral peritoneum. When the gallbladder is exposed, the cystic artery is clipped and the cystic duct is clipped. And then incisions are made in between the clips. This is in order to prevent spillage of contents within the ducts. Once the incisions are made, the gallbladder can be safely removed. The cystic duct is clipped and so it doesn't bleed out. And the cystic duct, remember, was clipped and so it doesn't spill anything as well. When the gallbladder is removed, everything is put under the visceral peritoneum once again. It's stitched up and the surgery is done. However, sometimes an open cholecystectomy is needed. This is especially if there are complications from the gallstones or complications during laparoscopic surgery in the first place. An open cholecystectomy is quicker, but is much more invasive.